Hello everyone, I would like to welcome you to the second installment of the UX Week online webinar. Today we will talk, we will talk about mobile prototype testing. But first, a few words about me and about UX Week. My name is Marek and I'm a UX researcher at UX Week and I mainly focus on enterprise level support for our clients. UX Week as a platform is a all-around tool which aims to provide you with everything you will need for your UX research as well as recruiting. But today we'll focus on the mobile prototype testing. Bef uh, what will we learn today? Ins and outs of mobile prototypes, how to do mobile testing with UX Week, what to look for in screen recordings and how to analyze the results of mobile testing study. Before we get to the uh, study itself, first few words about mobile prototypes. As you might know, more than 62% of, of uh, web traffic is from mobile phones, which means it is important to test mobile prototypes, not just desktop prototypes. But it's just a small web page, isn't it? Well, it isn't. First difference is the uh, different uh, screen aspect ratio. Also, you are uh, typically using your mobile phone in completely different uh, circumstances compared to desktops. You are more likely to be uh, disturbed by your surroundings, uh, you are more likely to have a bad lighting, etc. Also, the controls in mobiles are completely different compared to desktop. You are using your fingers instead of a keyboard and a mouse. Also, since your mobile is a communication hub for you, you have all your socials there, all, uh, all your uh, emails, etc. So, uh, pop up notifications are more than likely to interrupt your flow. Also, somebody can call you since it's your mobile phone and they can completely interrupt your flow. So how to create a prototype for mobile testing? First of all, since there are many mobiles, uh, there are many different resolutions, it's a good idea to pick one resolution, create your uh, prototype for this resolution and test it on this, uh, re the uh, same resolution of mobile phones, obviously. And once you're done with that, uh, your responsibility should take care of the rest. Also, since you are trying to fit uh, content on a much smaller screen, uh, you are more than likely to use scrolls. It is important that you uh, model these scrolls properly in your prototype uh, and to make sure they are not clipping through any other elements. Okay, so now uh, about our study. It's a uh, small study of a prototype of a car sharing application. You can see the uh, prototype uh, on this link. Check it out yourself. Uh, it includes all the uh, typical use cases for a car sharing application, uh, ride finder, as well as offering a ride, as well as a list of rides which you have already completed or are ahead of you. Lastly, you can add a car into your profile so you don't have to uh, always input the information about the car every time you would like to offer a ride to somebody. Uh, the study itself has three tasks. One is about finding the ride, one is about offering the ride, and the final one is about adding a new car you just bought to your profile. We gathered 12 respondents and they all completed the study using iPhone 30 mini to assure they have the uh, same, uh, uh, same testing uh, environment. Okay, so now for the prototype review itself. As you can see, we have created a prototype in Figma. Not, there is no need to uh, delve deep into this. The only important point is that we made sure that we uh, created uh, alternatives for all the uh, possibilities your uh, respondent could fill in your form so they can get lost in the prototype itself. So now, since uh, we have created our prototype, we can go into UX Tweak and create a uh, mobile testing study for our prototype. It's rather simple. All you need to do is create a new mobile testing study, name it something that uh, uh, you would like to. Uh, this name is just for you to uh, organize your studies. This will not be shown to your respondents. You can pick one of the three options here, uh, either the iOS native app uh, or test uh, from App Store or Testflight. You can also test mobile uh, websites as well as prototypes, which we are going to do right now. You simply paste your, uh, your started prototype link into the prototype URL and that's all you need to do regarding the prototype itself. 
Once you have done that, you can go to tasks and here you can figure out the task text you want to give to your respondents. What I've done is that I have, as I mentioned, created three tasks. All of them are rather simple. You and your three friends want to get from Prague to Berlin on 29th October. I'll find out uh, how much will each of you pay for this ride if you choose to go with driver named Bob Leroy. It's a simple task, uh, no additional information, just everything they need to make sure they know what they are supposed to do. We also added two post-task questions. How much does the ride with Bob cost? And what uh, car does Bob drive? This is just to make sure that uh, our respondents uh, gather all the information they are, they are supposed to gather uh, during the uh, course of the task. Our next three tasks are similar. As I have mentioned, they focus on offering a ride and adding a new car. Since we, have, uh, since we want to make sure we are recruiting only people who will actually uh, use a car sharing application in the future, well, we created a screening question where we asked them how often they use a car sharing service. Uh, we added multiple options, not just uh, yes or no, uh, to make sure that we are able to differentiate between people who use this uh, car sharing services often and the people who only use them uh, once in a time. Uh, okay, and the, uh, we also added a, a pre-study question uh, to differentiate between people who own a car and don't. This is uh, to make sure that we can uh, differentiate between people who are only interested in finding rights and people who can also offer rights as well. And we also added one post-study question. It's a simple question. Uh, would you recommend Copilot to your friends? This question aims to gather a all-around opinion about the application from your respondents. So since we have all everything set up, uh, we can simply click launch and the study will be launched. Once it's launched, you can share it with your respondents either by sharing the uh, study uh, link or uh, using a QR code they can scan and participate in the study. So now with the setup uh, done, we can uh, check out the video I have prepared for you of how this study would look like on your device. Okay, so now we can see how the respondent would see the study on their phone. As you can see, this is the part where they have already copied the link and they are in the browser or, or they use the QR code to enter the study. First of all, they need to accept the UX3 terms of service to allow us to record the device. Now they are uh, met with the welcome message where they uh, select the, an, an answer to the screening question. We selected once per week option for the uh, how often do you use a car sharing service. Now they are prompted to install the UX Tweak app, which uh, since we already have installed it on this device is a step we can skip by clicking app installed continue. Now they are informed that everything is ready for the study to begin and they can open the UX Tweak app simply by clicking this button. We need to uh, turn on the do not disturb mode to make sure that no notifications or pop-ups will uh, interfere with the recording of the study. Once we have done that, we can continue to the study itself. By pressing this uh, black circle, the uh, screen recording will begin. And now we can see the red bar at the top, which uh, shows the respondent that their screen is currently being recorded. Now they are shown the pre-study question, where they are supposed to answer if they own a car or not, uh, to help us differentiate between uh, the, the types of users we would have for our application. We will select the I own, car, own a car option. Next. Now they will be... Uh, allowed to warm up in the prototype to to familiar, familiarize themselves with the prototype. So by starting this task, the prototype will load from Figma. It always refreshes uh, 
with the next task to make sure that it, the respondent begins in the main menu. And now all they have to do is just look around and get to know the prototype a bit. And once they are done with that, they can return to the application and go to the next task. Now they are presented with the instructions for the study itself. And once they read it, they can start the study. Always they are with tasks, they are always shown the task text at the top right here. And when they are done reading it, they can start the task by clicking start, start task. The prototype itself always refreshes to make sure, as I have already mentioned, that, that they begin in the main menu. The first task is to find the right. So we need to just fill out this form, press find the right, and that's the first task done. When, once they are done with the task, they return to the application, press task done. If there are any post-task questions, they answer them. Just like this. And they move on to the second task. As I have mentioned, the task text is always present at the top. You read it and start the next task. Prototype refreshes. And they can go and complete the second task, uh, which is offering a ride from London to York. And they are done. That's the second task done. They go back to the uh, application, press task done. There are no uh, post task questions, so they don't need to answer anything. Just go to the final task, which is uh, adding the newly bought car into their profile. We need to open the profile, add a car. And that's that. We can see the car here. That was the final task. Once they are done with the task, they are taken to the post-study questions where, they, where we ask for their uh, general opinion about the application. And once they answer this, the study will end. The screen recording will automatically turn off. They will be notified with a pop-up. Now this recording has been uploaded and they are provided with a thank you message. Okay, so now for the analysis of the results we got from UX Tweak. As we can see here, uh, UX Tweak provides you with uh, multiple analytic uh, uh, attributes. We can see how many people completed your study out of the people who participated in it, what was the time they needed to complete it, the completion uh, rate, and all the breakdowns you might need by location, uh, device, operating system, etc. If you are interested in uh, more specific uh, details of uh, one of the respondents, you can go to the respondents tab where you can see uh, how long the specific respondent needed to complete the study, what was uh, their answers for, what were the, their answers for the questions, and you can watch the screen recording as well. We'll get to back. We will get back to that later. And here in the analysis tab, you can uh, see the details of for each of the tasks in the task statistics, and you can also see the answers for all the questions aggregated. So you can see how many people answered once per week, for example, in the screening question, etc. Also, you can export all the uh, results in PDF format to present it to somebody or in CSV format to uh, do the further analysis on them. But as I've mentioned, we'll go to the uh, results now. Okay, so now for the results. As we can see, uh, we have skipped the first uh, part because it was not important. It was just filling out the questionnaire. But this respondent is going to struggle because they filled out the form for right, finding a right. But now they believe they are supposed to interact with something. However, there is no interactable elements left on this page. They will figure it out after a while and return to the application, which works as a study conductor for uh, the mobile testing. And they will fill out the correct uh, cost right, but they will uh, pick uh, the wrong car type, which they will fix by going back to the prototype itself. Now they are going to, uh, fill, uh, fill, uh, to complete the second task, uh, in which they are supposed to offer a ride in their Kia from London to York and they are supposed to offer three seats, uh, 35 euros per seat. 
As we can see, the uh, prototype always restart itself to make sure that uh, the respondent starts at the beginning. Now they uh, will struggle with the drop-down for selecting the car because they are confused what is going on. They don't understand that it's a drop-down and they are supposed to select a car type. And as we can see, this means that the drop-down is not designed properly. Once they finally manage to select the type of the car, they move on uh, without any further problems. But the most problematic task was the last one, the task number three, which, uh, in which they were supposed to add a uh, new car. They bought a Volkswagen into the list of their cars with four seats available. It's not a complicated task. However, we will see that the respondent will basically go through the whole of the prototype and not uh, really go uh, where they are supposed to go. They will just guess where they're supposed to go. They will start with the right list in your right, which is completely different use case. They will return back to the main menu and try offering the ride with the Volkswagen, which is also not the thing we, are, we want them to do. But then they literally tried everything else but going to my profile, which means they will eventually stumble up on it and add the car successfully. However, we can see that if there were seven options in the menu, they are most likely to try each and every one of them be before going to my profile. Here they finally add the car. Well, the adding process itself was without an edge. Uh, and now this is uh, a big takeaway that we will need, most mo we will most likely need to either rename my profile or put the add car option into the main menu itself. So, with this screen recording analysis done, what are the takeaways from this webinar? As I have mentioned, please don't ignore mobiles. Pay attention to the differences because it's not just a small website. As I have mentioned with the prototype review, make your prototype wide enough to allow your respondents to get at least as lost as my respondent did. Uh, as we have analyzed the recording, we are looking for confusion, backtracking, that was uh, the third task, stalling on screen without an interaction, that, can, that, could have been, that could have been seen in the second task, and trying to interact with non-existing clickable elements. That was the first task we have seen. So here are the takeaways all together, so you can screenshot them and save them. Thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure having an, another webinar. You can download the slides from webinar at this link and the link for the prototype as well should be available in the description below. Thank you for your time. Here is a cute rectangle as a present for you and have a nice rest of the day. Goodbye.